so sorry for the wait. Life experiences happen. Sometimes good. Oftentimes chaotic. And almost always unexpected. We've been truly overwhelmed, humbled, and blessed by the projects and opportunities that have involved us recently. Anyways, here's the long-awaited second installment in our five-part series on... <laughs> Oftentimes, when we are faced with a difficult question, we jump at the first solution that is given to us, accept it as fact, and move onwards with our lives. However, the most important questions we encounter as creators, artists, and humans, have many valid answers. Some answers that we will need to hear more than once. Some answers that will support our pre-existing worldview, some others that will contradict and undermine it. But what is true of all answers is that they each play a part in reflecting the depth, nuance, and complexity of the original question. Such is the case with the question of creating exponential rhythms. While the free rate arpeggiator serves as an effective solution, it only scratches the surface in terms of the rhythmic depth and sonic manipulation that is to be discovered within these rhythms. In this video we will be diving one level deeper. We will learn to create exponential rhythms with Ableton's simpler instrument, through the use of its powerful sample looping capabilities. The initial process and results may bear a resemblance to those from the first video in this series. But as we explore further, we will discover that there are certain kinds of sounds that we can only achieve through the use of Ableton Simpler. For this demonstration, we're going to load this impact sample into a simpler instrument. To prepare Simpler for sample looping, we're going to activate the loop button. Disable the zero crossing snap button. Ensure that sample start is set to zero. And that the sample loop and length parameters are both set to 100%. We also recommend moving the sample end marker closer to the end of the tail of our impact sample. By sustaining a note and adjusting the value of the length parameter, we're able to create rhythms that stretch and compress over time. Similarly to our demonstration of the free rate arpeggiator, we can create a MIDI clip with a single legato note. And automate the length parameter to our preference. Keep in mind that the length value is not measured in terms of time or milliseconds, but rather as a percentage of the sample length between the start and end markers. This allows us to shorten the sample to the point where looping reaches audio rate. Much more so than what is possible with the free rate arpeggiator. Since we're looping an audio sample, its length and playback speed are tied to its pitch. By modulating the transpose parameter, we are proportionally modulating the length of our sample loop. We can modulate this parameter in the automation lane by using Simpler's built-in pitch envelope or simply by playing different notes on our MIDI keyboard. 
by reducing the number of voices to one, enabling the glide parameter, and setting a generous glide time value, we can smoothly transition between pitches and their corresponding looping rates. We can further shape our loops with simpler's additional sample region-based parameters. We can nudge the playback starting point by increasing the start parameter value as well as adjust the loop starting point with the loop value. We can also add a crossfade to the looped region of our sample with the fade parameter. Exploring the interdependence between these parameters can lead to interesting sonic results, especially those with a granular or textural nature. <laughs> We can also warp any sample inside of Simpler, and can abuse life's warping modes like we would on an audio clip in our arrangement. However, once a sample is warped, it will retain its timing regardless of pitch, so pitch modulation will no longer affect the loop length of our sample. The warp mode and amount of time stretching applied will mangle the sample's rhythmic and harmonic content, with extreme values completely obscuring the original sound. Unfortunately, a thorough examination of Ableton's warp modes exceeds the scope of this video. But just so you get an idea, here are some examples of extreme sample warping in Simpler. Exponential rhythms lies in their ability to obscure our perception of time. To exercise independence from the arrangement grid. However, it can be tricky to wield these kinds of rhythms in a musical context. Especially within the confines of dance music, where ideas are built upon an underlying pulse. Fortunately, with exponential rhythms, there's a way to strike a balance between chaos and order. By using Simpler, we can create exponential grooves which simultaneously support and subvert our rhythmic expectations. Let's begin by loading a drum rack with a number of drum samples. Drum rack will automatically create an instance of Simpler for each sample. We're also going to add some effects processing for timbral and spatial variation. <laughs> 
Next, we're going to create a simple drum sequence and ensure that all notes are legatoed. Now let's prepare one simpler for sample looping. We can take advantage of the copy value to all siblings option inside of the right click menu to copy parameter settings from one simpler to the rest. Now we're going to map the loop length parameter to a macro. Just like the copy option, we can use the map to all siblings option to map the sample length parameter for each simpler to the same macro. We can also fine tune the loop length for each sample by adjusting the corresponding sample start and end markers. All of our samples are now affected by this sample length macro. Let's trigger these samples while modulating their length. Time. Let's modulate the loop length macro while playing our original drum sequence. Doing so allows us to superimpose exponential rhythmic movement onto the beats of our sequence, effectively creating an exponential groove. Now that we've established the basis of our groove, we can utilize some tricks to create even more movement. Let's add some transposition mappings to our hi-hat samples to introduce an element of pitch modulation. We'll also extend the sequence loop and draw in some sample length automation. Lastly, let's lengthen some of the MIDI notes in our sequence, so that some notes overlap. When triggering loop samples, overlapping notes result in overlapping rhythms. Keep in mind that the sample length parameter is not measured as a fixed time value but rather as a percentage of the entire sample. This means that any two samples of distinct lengths will result in a distinct polyrhythm. As we modulate the sample lengths, we're essentially creating exponential polyrhythms. These rhythmic possibilities are unique to sample looping and simpler. The free rate arpeggiator on the other hand, will repeat or loop a sample at the indicated time value, regardless of sample length. Anyways, let's take a listen to our new exponential groove. We can also experiment with adding sample loop to a separate macro, which, combined with all of our pre-existing parameter automation, can push our samples past the threshold of audio rate looping, resulting in some interesting artifacts. We'll also create a separate macro for the crossfade parameter. Cranking this will help with smoothing the smaller loops.
Creating exponential grooves in this fashion allows us to harness Simpler's immense sound design potential for the sake of artistic expression. It lets us tread the border between control and disorder with a little bit more confidence. In a way, we are only creating the illusion of things falling apart. There are of course, many other ways to do so in Ableton Life. But we will have to save those for future videos. We decided to add a couple more samples to introduce a harmonic backdrop to our exponential groove sequence. We extended and arranged the sequence and mixed in a bit of spacious reverb as well as a healthy amount of compression. So, before we conclude this video, let's take a listen.